we need to go farther on the right than we have gone in the past. Because for the past, let's just call it 20 years, even though it's been a little longer than that. On the right, we have pushed back just hard enough to lose, to lose, to lose on every major issue, except occasionally tax cuts, which then the taxes go right back up when the Democrats win. So we just lose, lose, but we lose kind of slowly. We lose sometimes in a gradual way, though increasingly it's accelerating. So that means you got to push back a little bit harder, which brings me to uh, two guys that I really, really admire. Uh, who I just think we disagree on this issue. Uh, professor Robbie George, legendary conservative professor at Princeton. I actually hosted an event or, or moderated an event at the Roger Scruton Legacy Foundation with Professor George uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he was tweeting out about the issue of critical race theory. And he gave what I think has been the kind of conservative consensus opinion of the last 20 or so years, where he said, I know I'm old fashioned, but I can't help thinking that what makes sense in academic institutions is not to ban critical race theory or any other view or approach, but also not to give it a monopoly or privileged position over other views and approaches. What's wrong with that? Pause there for a second, because I think there is something quite wrong with that, but we'll pause that. Uh, Christopher Rufo, who's doing superb work in City Journal, exposing critical race theory. He responds, respectfully, professor, nobody is suggesting a ban on critical race theory in academic work or the classroom. We're suggesting a ban on mandatory workplace trainings that force people to accept the values of race essentialism, collective guilt, and neo-segregation. So I, I will respond here first to Chris Rufo. I am suggesting a ban on critical race theory. I am not merely suggesting that we ban the mandates in workplaces or anything like that. I am suggesting in, in public schools and public colleges an outright ban on this stuff in the classroom and in private colleges and universities. I'm encouraging the faculty and the students and the parents and the trustees and the people who, who fund the endowment. I am suggesting that these people force this trash out of the classroom not to open up the classroom to other ideas and we're all inclusive. And no, I'm saying exclude that trash. And the view that I'm espousing, I think is the old fashioned view. That's the old fashioned view that has reigned until very, very recently. That's the old fashioned view that William F. Buckley Jr. articulated in God and Man at Yale, subtitle, The Superstitions of Academic Freedom, which is widely credited with beginning the post-war conservative movement. I know it's very fashionable on the right right now to embrace academic freedom and to say that in the classroom, all views should be heard at all times. That is not a conservative view. <laughs> that is a liberal view that the left has tricked us into accepting and specifically did so in the 1960s and 1970s through the extraordinarily dishonest Berkeley free speech movement, uh, inaptly named because look where that free speech movement led us. Now Berkeley has more censorship of conservative views than anywhere else in the country practically. It is a trap. It is a trick that we fell for. This is the, the exact trick that I describe in my book, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, which is available now for pre-order. Who knows for how long, but thank you to all of, all of you who have pre-ordered already. It seems that a lot of people have done that. Bill Buckley in, in God and Man at Yale calls academic freedom a hoax. It is a farce. We do not, we, first of all, it's not possible to discuss all views in the classroom. And we wouldn't want to do that even if we could. In the classroom, we do not discuss, uh, for instance, uh, how two plus two can equal five. It, it, some people might think that two plus two equals five, but it, it doesn't. That's wrong. We exclude that view from the classroom. In the classroom, we do not include the view that the, the Holocaust didn't happen just to use a, a popular example. There are actually quite a number of people who hold that view, but we don't teach that because the historical evidence is that the Germans committed atrocities against the Jews and other people in the Second World War. We do not include the view in the classroom that the moon is made of green cheese. Some people might hold that view, but we don't include it. The truth is exclusive and curricula are exclusive. When, when you go to a liberal arts college, you're probably not going to learn how to be a mechanic. You would have, you'd have to go to a different college. That's not what that college is for. Colleges have missions. They are teaching towards something. Now colleges seem to have lost their sense of purpose, though they only really seem that way. The colleges were begun as seminaries. Harvard and Yale were seminaries. They are seminaries still. They're just seminaries of subjectivism, of leftism. You have to 
exclude certain views. And I, I think we need to do that because I think falling for the trap of the free speech movement at Berkeley, what did it get us? It got us this, the same exact limitations on speech we always had. It's only now the speech that was being excluded was ordinary, truthful, conservative speech. And, and the, the only views that were being included were, were liberal views. Critical race theory must be excluded from the classroom because it and associated academic movements deny reason. Critical race theory and associated pseudo-academic movements reject objective truth for narrative. They say it's all just kind of words, words, words. So the people who develop this thing, who I describe in in my book Speechless, uh, describe it as a a radically different academic sort of movement. It's meant to foment a a radical ideology to upend our traditional culture. It is an example of what Chesterton would call the thought that stops thought, which of course is the only thought that ought to be stopped. I hope, I hope I've made my point. (laughs) Even though I greatly admire both of these men. I think what, what Professor George and what uh, Christopher Rufo are describing is uh, an opinion that is very, very popular among conservatives. But I, I just, I don't think it's the old fashioned traditional opinion. And I think we've, we've got to be able to push a little bit further. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Michael Knowles show. To check out the full episode, hit the link in the description or download the Michael Knowles show wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs>